On this Harbor Freight lathe, I'm going to be making a little part out of aluminum out of this big piece of stock. And first, I'm just going to cut off this section. It'll end up being a nine millimeter piece in length. So I measured it out to 11 millimeters. So I have a little bit of room to face it on both sides. And in my tool post right now, I have a 60 degree threading tool. I'm just going to use it to make a groove where my line is so I can fit my hacksaw in there and cut it easily without a bandsaw or a cutoff saw. Now I don't have this supported in my tailstock, but I'm only going to be going in a little bit. I won't be feeding the whole way through. Now we've created a groove that our hacksaw blade will fit nicely into. And while this is spinning, we can just hold our blade here and cut through the part. Got a pretty good groove size in there now, and I'm just going to leave it stopped and cut the rest with the hacksaw manually. And I'll make sure to keep it straight with the circle that I've already had engraved on there. We're getting pretty close to finishing this cut now. Now I'm going to replace this tool um, with this one, which will work much better for facing. It has a larger radius on its corner, so I'll put that in. Now that this end is faced, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and do the other side. Now before I go ahead and flip this over and face the other side, I'm just going to take the burr on the edge of our face off of the file. That way it won't um, get in the way of the chuck jaws. Um, that can make it run less true, so I'll go ahead and take it off. There we go. Don't feel anything, so I'll flip it around. Here's the next side, I'll go ahead and face it. Now with both ends faced, I'm going to measure it. Um, our finished length should be nine millimeters. So, uh, here we've got about a millimeter over nine. Um, they're not very well zeroed. These calipers can squeeze a little bit, so they don't always give a real accurate reading, but we know that we need to take almost a millimeter off. So I'm just going to touch off on my face and then feed over um, almost 40 thousandths, which is the same as one millimeter. So, here we go. So after a couple roughing and finishing passes, uh, we have this down to just about nine millimeters. You can tell it's a little bit um, out of parallel because it's higher on some sides and lower on some sides, but it's not a very high tolerance part. So I think it's all right. I'll leave it at that deburr this edge and then I'll drill on the side. So I deburred this edge and this one is already deburred. And now I'm going to put it farther back in my chuck. Um, the more that the jaws are clamping on your part, um, it'll make it straighter. So that's why I have it all the way in here and I won't be doing any turning on his face, I'm just drilling, so it doesn't matter that the jaws are farther forward than his face. Now we'll be using our tailstock for the drilling on his face, and I will start out with a center drill. So the 7 16th pilot and a quarter inch body, but that doesn't really matter because we're drilling it out with a sized bit after this. I'm going to tighten it up 
um, so that it's almost touching my face here. And then go ahead and center drill it. I loosen this, uh, you can see we have our center drilled spot. Uh, it's important that whenever you're center drilling, make sure you go all the way past the pilot and then just up part of the way on the tapered section. And also it's important to remember that you want to start very gently when you're coming with your tip. It gets easier after you get to the full pilot diameter and even easier once you get up the taper. But before that, you wanna make sure you're going in very gently. Now that we have our center drill, I'm going to put an eight millimeter hole into it. Um, the closest inch size that I have is a 5 16 um, It's pretty close to an eight millimeter, so I'll go ahead and drill that with a little bit of oil. So I got the hole all the way through, and now I'm just going to countersink it. Um, doesn't really have to be exact, it's mostly just for deburring. And I can do that without putting it in the drill chuck, just to put it in here. And actually I want to put a little bit of radius on there so I can wobble it back and forth as I do that. This works really well on aluminum because it's really soft. And it's definitely deburred, and we even have a little bit of a radius on there. Now I'm going to flip it around, deburr the other side, and I'm going to stick it out of my chuck a little bit farther because I'm going to be doing some external operations now. Now I need to only grab on to a little bit of um, the back of this so that I can put a step in this side. But if I do that, Try to eyeball it straight and then spin it up. It's got a lot of wobble. So I'm going to be using these. Um, they're aluminum pieces of bar stock um, that I have and they're pretty parallel, say at least within a couple thousandths. So that's good enough for what I'm doing. And I've stacked them so that I can uh, make sure that the face of my chuck is clean and put them there and then lay my part on those, making sure they're not angled both together and then tighten up my chuck, take them out and now they should be parallel, um, this face should be parallel with this face, and so should that face. And it looks a whole lot more true, so we can do the external stuff now. Right now my OD is 25.2 millimeters and I want it to be 20. So that means I have to take off 5.2 millimeters and convert that to English. I have to take off 205 thousandths on the diameter. Now my machine, um, each of these increments is one thousandth of an inch, but it's on the radius, not the diameter, which means if I'm taking off two 105, that means I have to take off 102 and a half thousandths. So I'll just take off about 100 and check where I am again. And I should be close enough, probably. And I might need to take a couple small finishing passes. Now when I'm turning diameters, I find that this tool works better. It's uh, one that I made and it's got a carbide insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch tools again. So I've gone in 90,000 so far, and I'm reading um, that I need to go about 0.8 millimeters more, which is about another 30 thousandths. Now I have this down to size, and I'm going to use a file again to do some deburring, and I'm actually going to put a radius here. So 
I flip my part around and using these parallels and my parting tool and they fit under there in the parallel. And I'm going to take this part off this um, down to 14 millimeters. So this will be the lowest part. And I did not set the depth on this ID right here. Eventually this distance will have to be three millimeters and then I'll have six millimeters on my 14 millimeter diameter. But I just made sure I went more than three millimeters. So I'll go ahead and take that off. Now I'm just gonna turn this part down to 14 millimeters at 16 millimeter depth. Now I'm going to, uh, now that I have this down to the same diameter, I'm going to mark um, six millimeters in and then go all the way down to my finished diameter at that depth. So like I said before, this isn't a real high tolerance part. I just know that I have to be somewhere in that black line. So I'd say that's pretty good, at least within a couple thousands. So I will proceed with that. Now I have my diameter down to the right size. So I'm just going to drag my tool back along my shoulder um, to get a better finish there. And I did leave a little bit of stock to do that. So I'll go ahead and finish that up. And there at the end of my shoulder, I had a little bit of a radius there in the corner. Um, all of the edges on this part will be radiused, so just another one. Now I have my 14 millimeter diameter down to the right size and my uh, six millimeter depth correct. So I'm going to deburr and radius this, and then I'm going to flip it around and radius this edge. So towards the beginning of the video, you might remember that we drilled a 5 16 hole through our part. So I just took a 5 16 bolt, put it through, crushed it between two nuts, um, and then I put another nut here on the end. It's the same size as that one, so that our chuck can grab on here and here. They're hexagons, so a uh, three-jaw chuck works wonderfully with them. The second nut back here is just to help it stabilize in this direction so it doesn't wobble. It acts like it's holding on to a larger part. So I can chuck this up. So sometimes uh, when you are reaching into a tighter spot, um, you might need to use the edge of your file like that can't fit it um, on the face. But it worked well to make this radius here. And now um, the part is finished. We have everything deburred. All our radius is on, are on there. Um, it's dimensioned and we have our hole through it. So from start to finish, we've made this aluminum bushing. Uh, starting with our piece of aluminum stock and we end with a dimensioned part. I think it looks pretty nice with all the radiuses on there. And I hope you learned a lot about how to use a lathe like this one. Um, you can use these techniques on this lathe or almost any of them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe.